Mountain biking protection. I think wearing some kind of protective gear while mountain biking is a no-brainer for pretty much everybody. But with so many new types of protection coming out, plus the fact that the modern mountain bike allows us to ride faster and harder than ever before, um, it can be kind of hard to know what gear to wear for all those different types of riding. You good? And the last thing you want is to realize that you've kind of undershot on how much protection you were wearing in the middle of a crash. And on the flip side of things, overdoing it on the protective gear is not that great either. Well, in this video, we're going to clear some of that up for you. And on a separate note, we are sponsored by 661 Protection. And so all of the you know protection items that we're gonna be showing is gonna be made by them. They do a great job. They've been supporting us for years. So thanks 661 for that. So if you're just getting into mountain biking, you're probably on a tight budget because you just spent a lot of money on a mountain bike. Well, hopefully you have a little bit left because at the very minimum, you're gonna wanna get a helmet. I think we all know the importance of protecting our head, protecting our brain, because those kinds of injuries are really hard to come back from. That's right, and it is best to look for a helmet that was designed primarily for mountain biking. A mountain bike specific helmet like the 661 Summit model is going to have just the right ratio of ventilation to protection. You'll also notice that a well-designed mountain bike helmet extends around to the back of the head a little bit more than usual for additional protection. And because we never know how our head is gonna get bounced around in a crash, your helmet should ideally include a system like MIPS, which helps mitigate rotational forces. Buy a helmet. Get something that works for you. Don't buy a used helmet. Never buy a used helmet, <laughs> ever. I know it might be tempting, but it's never a great idea. First, we're gonna talk about one of the best types of riding, and it's one of my favorites because you can just we can just head out our door and find a trail close by. <laughs> That's called trail riding. <laughs> I will never go trail riding without knee pads. And I actually went trail riding one time last winter without knee pads, and that was the only time I crashed during the winter on my knee. That's what's gonna happen every <laughs> time when you ride without knee pads. Knees are a relatively delicate part of our body, and it's usually the, one of the first things to hit the ground. And so no cool. matter what kind of riding, I never, I will, I will always wear some form of knee pads anytime I'm riding on dirt. Yeah, and I love wearing something that's gonna take a bit more impact. So my favorite type of knee pads for trail riding are the DBO knee pads from 661. I just like to have a little bit more protection for when I do hit the ground because unfortunately for me, it does happen pretty often. Yeah, and if, if the knee pads are comfortable enough, then why not have that bit of extra, extra protection too? You, on the other hand, sometimes wear something a little bit lighter. Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna talk about these in the next section too. These are the uh, Recon knee pads, and these are pretty new from 661, but basically it's like, it's much more of a sleeve style of, of knee pad, knee protection, and it's got like the D3O insert as well. So when you hit something, it firms up, but when you're not hitting something, <laughs> it's obviously very flexible and yeah, this, it's, it's a great option for lighter trail riding, for sure. The next thing that I would invest in after knee pads is gloves. That is kind of like your next point of contact. Like I often find you're either you're hitting your hands or your knees. <laughs> Quite often I will wear just a thinner pair for riding trail riding. Yeah, a little bit of glove can go a long way. Yeah, just the other day we were out on a chill family ride and somehow I just snagged a tree and then it went flying off my over my bars and just kind of slid on my hands and I was really glad I was wearing gloves that day. So now I mentioned these recon pads for uh, trail riding, but I also really like to wear them when I go to the local jump parks. Usually when you go to a jump park, it's more of a chill kind of thing, like you're not you know, covered in super techy mountain bike gear. And so I tend to want to look a little bit more casual, <laughs> I guess. I don't know, I don't know. Anyways, I'm trying to look like cool. These fit great underneath my jeans or whatever pants I'm wearing. And uh, so I've got some knee protection. If I fall, that the, D, the D3O will harden up and it'll save my knees. But at the same time, I'm just wearing jeans and you don't even notice I'm wearing knee pads. So, so cool. Extra cool points <laughs> for this guy. <laughs> And you can also get you know, this thin style of, of D3O pad as an elbow pad as well. And so I could be wearing this long sleeve and have that nice thin pad underneath. It's not bulky, you have lots of mobility and you have that fair amount more protection on your arms too. Mm -hmm. And you can really move around for all the tricks you're doing. All those sick tricks. 
Like this. Like that. <laughs> So, when things get a little bit more intense, we're usually shuttling or we're hitting the bike park. Or racing. I like to switch out my half shell for a full face. Yeah. The reasons are fairly obvious. You've got the chin guard here for that extra protection and for just mouth. like the full wrap around the back of your head. The thing is when, when you're engaging in activities like downhill mountain biking at a park or when you're shuttling or sometimes racing or whatever, most of the time you're not doing a ton of pedaling and so wearing uh, you know a little bit more, a more protective helmet with a chin guard and everything on there, um, it makes a lot more sense. I, I know I'm likely to hit some you know bigger features that I normally wouldn't even consider on, an, on a normal trail ride when I'm at the bike park. So looking for a good full face helmet that fits you properly, that's always such an important thing. Make sure, uh, especially if you're ordering online, make sure you get your head, head measurements and check it against their chart. It's always a great idea to make sure it has MIPS protection. Um, I know the ones that we wear pretty much always have MIPS in there. And moving on to the knee pad side of things, we can actually talk about these now. I've been using these all summer long and I really, really like them. Um, these are the Recon Advanced knee pads and they also have the elbow pads as well. Elbows? Um, there's so much protection going on here. The knee pads go up higher, they go down lower for maximum protection on the sides, obviously on the front. And what's really cool about these ones is that they have an optional hard shell front on it. And so when you're, say, trail riding or whatever, and you don't necessarily need the, the hard cap on there, you can just pull it off. And then when you go and hit the bike park, you can put it on there. It adds a little bit more, it adds a little bit more like slideability to it, <laughs> which is always nice. Yeah, and they're also like actually lightweight. Really, I don't know if you can see this, but it's like mesh breathable yeah. back. They're super comfortable. Yeah, I've been really, really happy with these knee pads all summer long. The next piece we're gonna talk about is, it's not something I personally wear all the time, um, and even not all that much at downhill mountain bike parks, but when I'm in situations where I know I'm gonna be pushing my limits of my skills, or know I'm gonna be so exhausted that I might make some mistakes I wouldn't normally make, I wear full body protection. And that includes full back protection and chest protection and hip protection. This is actually my jacket, but you can see there's just a giant piece of the D3O in there. And yeah. then on the shoulders. This one comes with the elbows I can even as just, part of it. I can just go ahead and model this right now. So when they designed this, they really, really tried to make it as breathable as possible, which is huge. I found every, it seemed like every time I needed to wear full body protection, it was really, really hot out, and so being able to wear this... Uh, it's actually not that hard to get on. There we go. <laughs> Just when you're on camera. You know, big beefy chunks of D3O, a huge back plate that's not only down the center, but it goes on the sides too. Um, it's been great. I really like mine. This is actually the women's specific version, so it fits women's bodies better, which is really nice to see. And down on and the on hips. The hips. Yeah. And you know what? I seem to always smash my hips when I'm crashing at really high speeds. So oh, yeah. having the, that little bit of protection there is pretty sweet. They, ha they actually have little interconnectable snaps that will connect the protective jacket to the shorts and from the shorts to the knee pads. Yeah. And also not all of their protective jackets include the elbow pads. And when they don't, you can actually connect the jacket to the elbow pads. And so it just kind of stops things. It's like one more step to like having things be comfortable and not be shifting around, especially when you're actually crashing, mm. to have it not slide away, either your knee pads or your elbow pads or whatever. I think that is just like the smartest thing ever and I don't know why everybody doesn't do this. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it all comes down to your personal comfort level and your preferences with how safe do you feel riding certain things. So if you feel safer having you know, top to bottom padding and D3O everywhere, then do that. Um, the technology for protection has come such a long way in the last 20 years, it's kind of nuts. The amount of protection that we can have on us now and having it so flexible and so breathable, it's and pretty so comfortable. and so comfortable, it's pretty insane nowadays. And so you can go ahead and do that and still have a good time on your bike. Yeah. So yeah, we hope this was helpful, this overview of some tech. The gear that we use on a day-to-day -day basis, literally every single ride we ever go on, we are wearing some combination of this gear. 
and we love it. So uh, I hope you got a little bit out of this video. For the people in the US, there is a link right to the 661 US website. And for people outside the US, there is a link to uh, Jensen USA page with whatever 661 stuff they have in stock at the time. And that's for Canada and wherever else they ship internationally. So uh, you should be able to find whatever you're looking for there. Yeah, if you like the video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers, everybody.